Welcome to the Flip Side of Crypto. Joining me today is a very special guest, Dominic Shiner. Dominic, welcome. Welcome. How are you doing? Quite well. And IOTA, an OG in the crypto industry. What are your feelings seeing the current I just think market zeitgeist. How are you feeling seeing these new up and coming projects? Well, face planting <laughs> and the OG is just looking superior. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a very exciting time in general. I saw so similarly to 2017, we had this huge hype where, where you could um, send out a tweet and the market moved. And, and we had the same situation this time where we had some rather famous billionaires tweeting about Dogecoin mm. <laughs> and mm. then Dogecoin imitators launching and then having insane market caps um, basically defining the height of the cycle, right? And and now now we're really in this sort of building phase, right? All of the, the, the insane hype that hasn't proven it itself, that ha doesn't really have developers behind themselves and doesn't have a serious entity and mm. organization behind it has been washed out. So, first of all, I think that's a really good thing because we always see this repeat itself again. And it's part of the part of the market, right? We have to figure out what works and what doesn't. DeFi wouldn't be here today without the ICO craze, right? We had to experience these, these things to, to mature and to figure out which use yeah. cases makes the, make, make, make the most sense. And right now we are we're sort of in an environment where I would say. There's no more the major competition happening on layer one, but more in the application layer. And, and that's why we see all of these different dApps and mm -hmm. compete with each other and also basically offering multi-chain support, right? Saying we don't just all launch in one um, like blockchain, but we want to want launch in multiple networks. Yeah. And so they basically establish their own brand, their own token, mm -hmm. their own community which is really exciting for, for a project like ours because our objective has always been to build the best possible layer one, right? this sort of foundational layer. And, and so, yeah, like I think overall their market, even, even though there's always projects that jump ahead of you for some weird reason um, because they're currently being hyped, um, we are in this market for so long, it's, it's difficult to hurt us, <laughs> right? We've been hurt too many times. Uh, <laughs> as the meme goes <laughs> um but no like we we are in this for the long game right and and we are really happy with where we stand right now and and, uh, and the team that we have right we have 160 people in the foundation so we are well established and well on our way to to achieve the objective right? yeah and that brings me to an interesting point about why i asked about the current situation so iota is a very particular project where you actually have real use cases Right? Yep. So mobility, e-health, smart energy, industrial IoT, just to mention a few, you know, um, those are not small industries to tackle. Those are multi-billion, maybe in the future, trillion dollar industries. Yep. Now, I don't think that people appreciate the scope which, which you are trying to tackle, right? And it just seems to me sometimes that we live in this quasi-reality in which meme coins, fake news, seem to generate enough hype to make right. projects which do not deserve it actually grow in price or grow in popularity, where projects like yours are like the smart kid in the back of the class. You know, do you have yeah. the same feeling? Yeah, you know, it's all about narrative economics. It's all about those narratives that encapsulate people's mindsets, right? And and really grasp like, like people want to be part of a movement. Most of the time. And, and the movement of the last cycle was, hey, we are gonna, all going to be rich. That's why, that's why meme coins, that's why stonks, right? Uh, meme stocks um, have become so popular because of like being part of this movement and you, you basically have, a, I would say, an irrational goal in front of you, like pumping Dogecoin to $1. But if too many people believe it and spread that message, it's actually going to happen, right? <laughs> It's, just, it's like the, the crazy part of the last cycle where people realize that they have a lot of power. They, mm. They're being empowered to trade, to invest, and they can move, move the market, right? And I think, I think that's sort of exciting as well because it just shows you that there's a new mindset in, in the investors in this entire crypto space, uh, which can be detrimental if misused, right? That's why we have so many projects 
launching influencer campaigns, uh, paying influencers to 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 pump their coin, basically. Um, but at the same time, it's it's sort of empowering as well, mm -hmm. right? Now, when it when it comes to to IOTA, we we really are focused on value creation. We we believe in the future that blockchain, that distributed ledgers are really here to solve fundamental problems that we, that we have with our current systems, right? That's that's why since the beginning, we have sort of taken this contrarian um, position in the market where we are sort of anti-blockchain, anti-miners, and also anti what the crypto space was doing at the time, right? Paying exchange listing, doing uh, insider trading, speculation, and all of that, and just stay focused on really um, delivering value. Yeah. And it worked out very well, I would say, because you can see all these announcements, right? Trademark is Africa, what we're going to talk about later. Gaia X with the European Commission, we have like a dozen really large scale pilot projects where IO is being integrated in the real world. But I think what's really missing for the crypto space um, to take IO more seriously as well is this tangible adoption, right? If we make an announcement with a big company today, um, everybody's like, oh, that sounds really great, right? Like, for example, with Dell, uh, mm -hmm. when we announced Project Alvarium, we published the open source code with them. We do webinars with them. Mm -hmm. We invite so many big companies to work together with us, but it's not tangible enough, right? It's not that you can directly participate. And, and what makes DeFi so great is you have your tokens and then you can do yield farming. You can do crazy stuff with your tokens, right? Some of it is overhyped, some of it is not sustainable, but at the same time, it just shows you what the future looks like. And so I think the in, in this next phase for IOTA, there's 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 basically two major goals that we have, right? First of all, we are definitely continuing on the trajectory of real world adoption. Mm -hmm. Because while Ethereum gets like one million transactions today, what we are looking for is to get hundreds of millions of transactions onto our network. And sure, mm -hmm. you can achieve a lot with DeFi, but Think about the entire governments and their systems running on a distributed ledger. And think about the physical infrastructure. And a simple example is like a parking lot, right? Think about all the parking lots running autonomously on our smart contract platform. This is sort of the, the, the future adoption that we are going for and that we want to really achieve. But at the same time, right now, we really focus on tangible adoption as well, where the IOTA token can be utilized within these applications mm. and where you can also earn yield on it, right? So, so it's like closing the gap in that regard while not losing our, our focus, which is really making sure that IOTA um, gets integrated in the physical world, right? We, we see ourselves as digital infrastructure. Right, and that brings me to that point of, you're creating, again, infrastructure, the way you phrase your sentences, it's all real world based. And that's yeah. amazing in the cryptoverse. However, that's not how the majority right now consume their news. That's not the media narrative. They right. haven't been red pilled yet. So, what's the red pill for IOTA? Essentially, if you were to distill it to a marketing message, so is it you're doing the unsexy and that will become sexy in the future? <laughs> what's the message? I think I think what we are really focused on is closing this gap between this crypto world and the real world as well. Okay. Right. Okay. So we are really focused on getting big companies onto our network. Right. Yeah. So we have Dell publishing transactions. We had um, transactions being published from airports, right? Where digital cool. certificates were being issued. We are doing digital identity where you can create a physical identity of yourself, right? Like for example, last week, I finally got the, the digital passport mm. um, for, for a vaccination passport, right? That, that, like, that is the sort of stuff that we are focused on. And I definitely think that IOTA is also there to bridge the gap between the, the digital world and the physical world, but also between the crypto world and sort of the, the enterprise world. Mm. If, you know, what's very interesting is all of the other layer ones, they're sort of competing on these marginal gains. Like, hey, uh, we can do more TPS. We can have lower transaction fees. We have instant uh, uh, transaction finality and stuff like that. And all of those features are gonna be commoditized, right? You cannot compete on, on that layer anymore. So you need to have a different um, competitive advantage in this market. Because if we came uh, out now and said, hey, we're going to do DeFi, um, nobody's going to care, quite honestly, because they shouldn't care, right? There's like, we, 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 we shouldn't compete on, on that level. 
And, and we see all of these other projects trying to compete by saying, hey, we can do more TPS, lower transaction fees. And it's not working. It's not working for them. The way that we compete is we're actually saying, hey, we actually have serious adoption in the real world. And we're going to bridge the gap with those and bring them into our network so that they are also going mm. to be um, counterparts. So they are also going to be validators in this network mm. and that they're going to be um, deploying their use cases onto mm. our network and being part of this part of this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the next major phases for us is definitely also more recognition from governments. Like mm -hmm. we already seen this in Germany and in Europe where we are now part of Gaia X, which mm -hmm. is like the European cloud initiative. Mm -hmm. So we are one of the, the, the projects that won um, some grants there, which are pretty significant because it's a lot of money, like a couple of million dollars, yours. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we also work very closely with the European Commission where we have several grants. So I think even though the adoption in the enterprise world takes a lot of time, it's worth it in the end because this is where, the, this is where most of the transaction volume will happen in the future, in my opinion. Right. But again, so we're talking about real world adoption, real world things. And unfortunately, we look at the market as it is right now. You have Dogecoin, Shiba Inu coin, whatever. I will not say that word on... Baby Dogecoin. Don't baby forget about Dogecoin. baby Dogecoin. Um, <laughs> some which would have an XX sign on it coin. You know, it's, <laughs> at this point, it's a bit ridiculous. And now you're introducing sanity to an insane world, you know? So that's my, from narrative perspective, um, don't you... so. In 2017, we went on to, you know, it was kind of hype, you know, a tweet moves the market. Right. Good. 2021 is memes move the market, essentially. Yeah. Don't you think that it, it could be just too early to show people, okay, this is, <laughs> are people not recognizing significant things because they're too hyped on, you know, hype news? Well, I think, I think we have to look at who is our target audience, right? With, even within the crypto space, there's not just your atypical crypto holder. There's very different um, sort of mindsets as well, right? There's people that really believe mm -hmm. in, the, in this future. People that really want to see this be adopted in the real world, that want to think about the use cases, that want to build the use cases, and that want, be, want to be part of a sort of community that... Uh, builds this future, right? And 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 IOTA is in that category. Mm. And if you want to be part of it, you can join it, you can participate, right? That's why we have such a big uh, Discord community, Reddit, whatever, right? And the other basket is sort of the short-term mindset where there is like, hey, how can I make as much money as possible, as quickly as possible, like I heard this guy on YouTube tell me about, right? Mm -hmm. So so it's like different mindsets within the crypto space. And we definitely only appeal right now to the to this long-term mindset of the future. And, and sure, it's painful to watch other projects uh, pump for no reason and you not making as many gains. But then again, like we all, we all live very, we, we live very comfortably right now mm -hmm. in, in where we stand. And so it's all about having this sort of long-term mm -hmm. uh, mindset of where we are heading. And like, of course we can close the gap between short-term and long-term by having sort of um, applications being built on top of IOTA. But I think the fundamental focus of IOTA will not change. We always, we, are, we as IOTA will always be focused on building this digital infrastructure layer and getting it standardized. Because that is how we believe the future. That, like that's, that's why my infamous trillions uh, statement comes from, because I firmly believe in that, right? If we standardize IOTA, it's gonna be worth trillions of dollars. And if we really get it adopted in the real world, then we are in a very good trajectory there. And I see sort of this, like if, if I look at IOTA, yeah. um, machine economy has always been one of our main narratives and one of our main focuses, right? And the Internet of Things. But I would say that IOTA is more of a sort of universal um, base layer where you can build different use cases on top. And machine economy is one of the very exciting ones, but there's also more traditional use cases, right? Digital identity is also like mm -hmm. the use case. So I really see IOTA as sort of as a, as a base layer where economies get built on. Machine economy is one. DeFi will also be one of those because we are building smart contracts, mm -hmm. right? So you can also enable those use cases. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's everything around digital identity and so on. So, so it's really about building the best layer one, I would say. So from my perspective, 
what you guys are doing is what I would like other projects to do. Unfortunately, it seems like they're playing a bit unfair. As yeah. for example, they will not announce that they are actually partnered with the trademark East Africa, for example. Could you just uh, explain to our viewers, Dominic, how significant is it? How it can help the average uh, entrepreneur? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so maybe some context, right? Um, we there's two major industries where I would say we have a big focus right now, and one of those is mobility, and the other one is is supply chain slash trade um, and logistics. Hmm. And supply chain for us is very close to our heart because, like, even before IOTA, we were we were always envisioning the future, right? What like what are the really tangible use cases? And and like supply chain was one of those because supply chain today is very archaic because it's still based on paper documents. Mm -hmm. And IOTA could really add a lot of value there. For one by digitizing the trade, but for another by securing those those documents and making them shareable. Right? There's there's like dozens of different parties that are involved in every single trade, and dozens of documents, data points need to be shared with the trade authorities, with the port authorities, with your supplier, with the bank, because they want to give you a loan, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we are focused on digitizing digital tr uh, trade, make it digital, mm -hmm. right? And also getting this, this efficiency by, by using IOTA to automating parts of it. And we work since I think 2019 now, uh, don't don't quote me on that. <laughs> but we but, but but we've been working with them on on a larger pilot project in East Africa, mm. specifically in Kenya, um, to actually digitize the trade from the farmer up to the trade authorities, right up to the port. And we we basically ran some calculations. And I think if you're an entrepreneur in Kenya right now and you want to basically participate in global trade. You have to get. You have to fill out around ninety six documents, right? <clears throat> and just just to get just to ship it, right? Just to participate in the global economy. Now with IOTA, that gets much more efficient, right? You don't need to sign out those physical documents anymore. But you enter the data once, and it just does it all out automatically. And so we ran this pilot project. We actually hired three developers locally in Kenya. Mm. So that's something that we are very proud of, actually that we are really starting to grow in Africa with our team. And the pilot was very successful. So Trademark East Africa and the Kenya government are very happy about it. So now we're actually scaling that up and we are now um, getting ready for an even bigger pilot project where we even not just doing it in Kenya, but also going to the country where the, to the recipient country, right? Where the trades are being received. So we are talking about Netherlands, we're talking about the UK and we, orchestrating all of these different logistics and and it's, it's a very exciting project and so we're also scaling up the team in africa now mm. probably probably to around seven to ten people oh wow yeah so we are really growing there and and this is fully supported by the government who, who is really excited about this project so we really believe that our technology can add a lot of value there for for trade right uh, one question, though, it's kind of an offside question, but uh, would this mean that there will be literally less paperwork that we would be saving some trees in the process as well? Totally, totally. Oh, amazing. And actually, is this just uh, Africa centric or will that, this then be copied and pasted in every other country? Yeah, this, yeah it's, it's a very good question. It can be applied everywhere. We, we do a lot in supply chain. So we have some other partners, like, for example, Zebra Technologies. Mm. Um, Zebra, I would say they have like 50% market share in barcode scanners. Whoa. So if you're, if you're good, if, like barcodes, if you think what makes the world work, work what makes the world round, it's standards. Yeah. One of those amazing standards was the shipping container. Mm. How, how big is it? How, how, how do we fit it into a ship? Amazing standard that made the world flat. And the barcode was another amazing standard that also made the world flat. And I think IOTA will be another amazing standard that will make the world even flatter, right? <laughs> and, and so we work with Zebra where they have the barcode scanners and the, and the goods then also, the, or like the, the company can decide if they also want to put the data into the tangle. So we work very closely with Zebra and are actually scaling that up. We also work with everything, which is another like digital trade mm. um, platform to store the data. 
And we have some other companies that we work for on, on, on some exciting use cases. So, so Kenya is, is a very important test bed for us to really prove that IOTA can, can work in the real world and that we can coordinate with those big parties because as you can guess, right? We have invested a lot of time and a lot of resources to sort of get this reputation in the market that we are a serious player. We are a German nonprofit foundation. We, we really take our work very seriously. And, and we want our partners to really feel comfortable when they work with us. And I would say one of the biggest um, competitive advantages that we have right now is sort of our reputation in the market. Because the, the big companies understand that we've worked with other companies, with some of their competitors in the past, that we really do open source very seriously, that we have a really experienced uh, team and they can sort of trust and rely on us. So, that, so that's why we are where we are today. And, and that's why the Kenya project is so exciting because it's really taking the next step now with the objective of obviously having this as a product, not just in Kenya, but in all of our Africa. Wow. And after Africa, so it's then Europe, Latin America, Asia, or are things a bit different uh, standard wise? Yeah. You, like global trade is hugely complex because there's so many different parties involved mm -hmm. and, and you need to coordinate with all of them. So Kenya is, is, is a test bed for us because we have the support of the government there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, we, we, we sort of have to grow this organically as well with, uh, because most, of, most, most important is really the support of the government. And mm -hmm. I do hope that because we have such strong standing in Europe, that we can get some support from the European Union right? mm -hmm. and do this more officially and also really scale it up and then really grow from there. I, I, I don't know yet exactly where we're going to grow, where we're going to expand this because it depends on the discussions, but it's definitely something that, that we are going to focus on. <laughs>